Hey everybody, this is Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and today is Friday, so I just thought I'd sit down and share a free tip with everybody. gets old. I saw that snake when she was a fresh hatchling. I've watched her grow up and now being able to take a clutch of eggs off of her and start incubating them. I mean, as long as I've been keeping reptiles going all the way back to the 90s, that just never gets old for me. It just never gets old. It's so exciting and so awesome to kind of see these projects come to fruition. And you know, as long as I've been keeping reptiles, like back in the day when I started in the 90s, there just really wasn't a whole lot of, of information on them, how to keep them, what to do, especially some of the, the little bit rarer animals and stuff. And so, you know, back then we had to do a lot of trial and error. Um, a lot of the, the care sheets didn't exist. The web information didn't exist. I mean, shoot, with Superdor reticulated pythons, it's 2018, guys. And there's still not a lot of good information out there online. I'm trying to change that. That's part of the, the reason for these videos. But if I can leave you with anything for your free tip this Friday, it would be this. Never stop learning about your reptiles. You'll hear a lot of people talk about something. They, they basically kind of regurgitate information that they've learned online without having a lot of experience. And the funny thing is, when you talk to people who have vast amount of experience with the reptiles they work with, they really do have a lot more of that student kind of mentality, that they're a student of the animals. They never stop learning from the animal because it seems like the older I get, I just had a birthday, you know, I turned 35, can you believe it? Yeah, so I'm way over the hill now. But the older I get, the less I seem to know it's, it's kind of funny. When I was young, I thought I knew it all and I had very little experience. Now that I have a lot of experience, I realize just how little I know. And so I'm always trying to push forward. I'm always trying to learn more. I'm always trying to innovate. Whether it's with incubation, you guys might have seen the videos that I put out on incubating, or the caging. I've got all my custom caging that I have built for the adults that have the shelves in there. I made a video about that as well. Any one of these videos that I've put out as a free tip is a result of me trying new things. You know, uh, having a foundation of what other people tell you is a great place to start when you don't know a lot. Find the person that you consider an expert in their field and keep reptiles the way they tell you to keep them. But always be looking for that next big thing because these animals are individuals. You have a unique environment in your house, your location where you're gonna be keeping this particular type of reptile. And so there's a kind of a microclimate and a very specific way that is gonna be the best way for you and for the animals that you keep. And I would encourage you to always be challenging yourself and trying to figure out how can I do this better? How can I make my animals happier? You know, maybe you've met all the specific requirements laid out on a care sheet or that somebody told you as a breeder and stuff. That's, that's great. But if there's a way that you can just do things incrementally better and continue to push forward, that's a way to do that. It was really cool to uh, pull that clutch from that female. You could see how she had those maternal instincts of wanting to protect her eggs. She was a little bit scared, a little bit nervous about what to do. But she also knows from her personal experience with me that I'm going to handle her gently. I'm going to take care of her. And she even, dare I say, trusts me with the care of her offspring. She was not as protective as a mother retic normally would be because she considers me a normal and a natural part of her environment now. 
Um, so I wanted to try something with her egg to just incubate a little bit better. I had this idea based on a new and innovative product from, uh, from Sim Container. But the basic idea between behind a Sim Container, it has a lip built in around the outside and inside that lip, that creates like a shelf and you have this little perforated layer. The shelves basically serve the same purpose as your perlite or vermiculite in incubation. And they give you these little rails. And you work it out just like Tetris. You take your shelves, you pop into place like this. You can arrange them however you like so that you can get your eggs all settled in there. You're just gonna fill that up with water in the bottom area and that's it. So you have your eggs suspended over water. The water never touches the eggs, but they get very high humidity and you don't have that wicking effect that is a problem with perlite or vermiculite where the water wicks up through your substrate and touches the eggs. Now what I am gonna try to do with these is actually add a bioactive substrate to the bottom. And I borrowed the idea from some of the vivs that I created for like my Madagascan leaf nose snakes, poison dart frogs, but you're basically gonna take some of these guys, springtails and isopods. And uh, what these guys do is in those bioactive, kind of like jungle setup vivariums, uh, they're gonna eat any mold or waste products that fall down into the leaf litter within, the, within your terrarium but you can actually culture them just on this stuff. That's activated carbon. So what I wanna do is fill up one of my sims with activated carbon just to below the level of where my little shelves fit. Like this. So the activated carbon is below it and I'm gonna have just a little bit of water in the bottom so I still get that humidity. And all I have to do is dump the isopods into here. I, I don't want to put the soil in, so I'm going to let a few of them jump out. So I'm going to basically be cultivating springtails, which eat mold inside of my incubation egg box. But my new idea is, and what I'm experimenting with half of this clutch, is that if I have my activated carbon just below the shelves, now the eggs are only sitting on the shelves, just like it, they would in any sim container, but the springtails are actually gonna be able to climb up through the holes, scour the eggs, and scrub them clean of mold. So sometimes you have an egg, it was just a bad egg, it was doomed from the beginning, and those are gonna mold right away. But in any species that has a longer incubation time, it's always hard to fight that mold in a hot, humid environment over the course of months. By the end, a lot of times, they're gonna be fairly moldy. And I'm just thinking that the more mold that covers the outside of the egg, the less oxygen that can get through to the embryo inside. So towards the end, you have a larger embryo using a lot of oxygen, but a reduced surface area because it's covered in mold. So my hope is with these eggs, that my bioactive substrate with, with those little springtails will be running up through the carbon for like a 24 hour cleanup crew eating all the mold off of them and keeping that surface area clean. At least that's the theory. So I guess we'll find out. But with this clutch, I had 12 eggs and I decided to split them 50-50 into uh, two different containers. One my traditional style and this other one this new one. Now if I was to tell you this is the right way to do it, I think I might be overstepping my bounds a little bit because everything works a little bit differently for different people out there. But by relying on your hands-on experience, you'll be able to push the envelope a little bit more one way or the other to challenge the status quo and change the way you do things to find out what's the right way to keep reptiles for you. And that's what I'm after with this specific clutch of eggs that I'm very excited about from my special little super little tiger anery girl. But the idea again is this, the right way to keep reptiles is the way that keeps you happy and keeps your reptiles happy. Start from a foundation of other people's experience so you're not reinventing the wheels. Stand on the shoulders of the greats. They've spent their entire life building up to a certain area. Why not start there and innovate even farther and you can become the next generation of reptile innovation. Every one of us is captivated by these animals. We love these animals. 
And when you love an animal, you should be taking care of them. It's like the analogy of saying, I love the beach. Well, what do you love about the beach? You say, oh, it's because I can lay out in the sun and perfect temperatures and get a tan and smell that salt air. You're not loving the beach, you're using the beach. You know, if you love the beach, you'll go there and you'll pick up trash at the beach. You'll tell other people what they can do to better preserve that environment so that it's there not only for you to enjoy, but future generations as well. Let's, let's apply those theories to our reptiles. Happy keeping, everybody. I'll see you next week. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care.